Day one of the NFL draft has came and went, and without a doubt, the Philadelphia Eagles are one of the day's biggest winners as they were able to add two players that can come in and have an immediate impact right away, but also can be guys that are building blocks for the future as they both have insane potential and they can become cornerstones of the Eagles defense for years to come. But how did the Eagles manage to get these guys and just how good are these two additions for the Eagles? Well, we're going to talk all about that in this video today, but before we do that, make sure you go down and subscribe to this channel if you want more consistent Philadelphia. Eagles content coming throughout this entire offseason and into next season. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and drop a like on this video if you do enjoy. And now with all that being said, let's get into the video. The Philadelphia Eagles were a team in a very fortunate position heading into the NFL draft as they possessed two first round picks at number 10 and number 30 overall. And heading into the first round, Eagles fans were especially excited to see who the Eagles would pick at number 10 overall. And the two names they were really focused on were Bijan Robinson, the running back from Texas, and Jalen and Carter, the defensive tackle from Georgia. And as the first round began to play out, we started to get more and more clarity on what direction the Eagles might go at number 10 overall. Now the first big pick that really could have affected what the Eagles did at number 10 overall was the fifth overall pick held by the Seattle Seahawks because it seemed like that was the highest possible selection where Jalen Carter could go off the board. But we didn't know if the Seahawks actually wanted to take him or not. There was a lot of mock drafts saying that he could be drafted to the Seahawks, but there was also reports out there saying they might not draft him. And then another report said that if Jalen Carter were to slip past five, then the Eagles can move up and try to get him. So obviously, a lot was riding on this fifth overall pick for the Eagles, and the Seattle Seahawks went and took cornerback from Illinois, Devin Witherspoon. So from that point on, it started to seem more and more like Jalen Carter to the Eagles could be a real possibility. And it really felt like the Eagles could make a move and trade up at any second to get Carter. And then soon enough, we were at the eighth overall selection, which was held by the Atlanta Falcons. And the good news was for the Eagles that Jalen Carter Carter and Bajan Robinson were both still on the board, and this was a crucial pick for Eagles fans and the Eagles because it was seeming likely that one of these two guys could head off the board, specifically Bajan Robinson because it had been reported in the days leading up to the draft that the Falcons had heavy interest in taking Bajan Robinson at number 8 overall, and it turned out that that was real because that's exactly what the Falcons did, and at the time I wasn't too happy about this. No! And this was obviously because, I've said multiple times on this channel, I really would have liked to see the Eagles take Bajan Robinson. I thought he would have been a great fit for the team, and I thought he would have changed their offense. And even though I still had Jalen Carter ahead of Bajan Robinson in terms of players that I would want the Eagles to draft, I was worried because there was still one more pick before the Eagles were on the clock at 10 with the Chicago Bears. And I was almost convinced at that point that the Chicago Bears were going to take Jalen Carter and the Eagles were going to miss out on both of those guys. But I should know better at this point not to worry as long as we have Howie Roseman as our general manager as he made sure that was not going to happen because he went out and he traded the 10th overall pick and a 2024 fourth round pick to the Chicago Bears in order to move up to the 9th overall selection in which the Philadelphia Eagles ended up selecting none other than Jalen Carter. And I was absolutely thrilled with this pick when it happened. Jalen Carter! I felt this way for pretty obvious reasons. I mean, Jalen Carter was a guy who was ranked as one of the most talented players in this entire draft class. In my mind, he was probably the second most talented player. Some people had him ranked as the most talented player in the entire class. And I thought for the Eagles to be able to get him at the ninth overall spot was just incredible and insane value. And now Jalen Carter will come join an Eagles defensive line and pass rush that is already one of the best in the league. And he'll join some of his former teammates in Jordan Davis and N'Kobe Dean on that Eagles defense. And he'll also also have the opportunity to learn from veterans who have had a lot of success in this league in Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham. And you know, when Fletcher Cox eventually ends up leaving, maybe at the end of this season, Jalen Carter's right there to be his replacement and he's going to be here for years to come. And in the short term, you could say that Jalen Carter is a replacement for Javon Hargrave because he obviously went to the 49ers signing a massive contract in free agency that the Eagles just simply couldn't afford to pay. But what you ended up doing is then drafting a guy who happens to be considered one of the most talented players in the draft and he obviously happens to play the defensive tackle position and he's also a lot younger than Javon Hargrave and a lot cheaper than Javon Hargrave so I think that's a really underrated aspect of this move by the Eagles and Jalen Carter I think it's pretty obvious that as long as he develops correctly he can become a cornerstone of this Philadelphia Eagles defense 
and he could be here for a very long time and have a lot of success. Now, of course, I know there are some people that are concerned with this pick for the Eagles, some people that aren't exactly a huge fan of it because they're a little bit worried about whether he'll be able to stay out of trouble off the field because of the accident that he was involved in back in January that's obviously got a lot of attention this offseason, and that's something Carter has had to deal with. That's probably the main reason that he fell all the way to number nine where the Eagles ended up taking him. And people also have a little bit of concern about you know, his focus and just him being locked in on the field and giving 100% every single play. But it seems to me like Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni, and the rest of the Eagles organization are confident that those won't be concerns for Jalen Carter moving forward. For both of you guys, we, we talked to Jalen on a Zoom call right after mm -hmm. the pick. Uh, and uh, it's only a Zoom call. He just got drafted. I understand mm -hmm. it's kind of unusual circumstances for the kid. But he was asked a few times about the incident in Athens. and. He didn't come across, at least to me, as accountable uh, about it. I know you guys are big on accountability. Yeah, I don't think that's fair, Ruben. You just said that. I mean, what do you, you want him to talk about in an active investigation at that time? What I'm asking is, what was his, when you talked to him about it? I think it, it's hard on a Zoom to find, to feel out a person's heart no, and their uh, accountability. With you and what he learned from it, how he grew from Yeah, that. I just don't think it's fair how you said that you didn't feel like You're that. You're being overly that, critical that, yeah. of a kid who's trying to enjoy the best night of his life. Um, we understand that there's a reason that he was available at nine, and that's part of what we're talking about. We got we got to develop the people, we got to develop the player. We take that part seriously. Um, we're going to wrap our arms around him and, um, you know, do the best we can to help him. You know, obviously, um, you know, we, we, we got to get to work here. So you guys heard what Howie and Nick said here. They feel like he's still a good person who made a mistake. And at the end of the day, he loves football. And he also thinks they have the right people in the building to help guide him in the right direction. So overall, I really love this pick. Like I said, he's one of the most talented guys in this entire draft class. And they were able to get him a lot later than I thought he was going to be available at number nine overall. And as long as he's developed correctly and he stays out of trouble, which I think he will, like I just said, I think he's a good kid that just made a mistake. I think he's going to stay out of trouble. I'm confident that this will end up being a great selection for the Philadelphia Eagles. So yeah, overall, super, super happy with this pick. And I think it's insane they were able to get him at number nine. But the Eagles weren't done just yet as they still had another first round pick at number 30 overall. And once they got to 30, the Eagles happened to have the perfect player waiting for them as Nolan Smith, the edge rusher out of Georgia, was someone that was linked to the Eagles in the pre-draft process. And I saw a lot of mock drafts saying that the Eagles could potentially even take him with their 10th overall selection should they miss out on guys like Carter and if they didn't want to take Robinson or one of the other prospects in this draft. And I think Nolan Smith was widely considered Considered to be one of the top talents in this draft. I think a lot of people considered him to be a top 15 talent, top 20 talent at the very worst. But by the time we got to the Eagles selection at number 30, Nolan Smith was still on the board. So the Eagles went out and they made the easy decision to select him with the 30th overall pick. And I was really, really excited about this pick at the time as well. Nolan Smith, baby! Let's go! that Georgia defense, baby. Let's go. And it seems like Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni, and the Eagles were very excited to have Nolan Smith as well. I'm surprised that um, uh, Nolan was still there at number 30. Yeah, I think that's one of the things in the draft that I, I think you got to be flexible. You know, then you see guys sitting up there like Nolan and, um, again, like an incredible person. Obviously, he got uh, unbelievable traits in his body, uh, leader, and uh, winner. You know, we're fielding calls at that time, and I think, you know, Coach and I kind of just looked at each other and said, hey, like, uh, this is the guy. Overall, I just think this was a fantastic pick and an absolute steal for the Philadelphia Eagles at 30. Because Nolan Smith is a guy who I think has insane potential. He's obviously super athletic at the combine he put on a show. He ran a 4.39 40-yard dash and had a 42-inch vert. And for an edge rusher, those numbers are absolutely insane. And his athleticism translates to his game as well as he's really quick off the edge and he's able to beat tackles with with his speed and get to the quarterback and he's had some good production in college as well and I think again I think if he's developed right he can be a great player in this league he's already drawn comparisons to Hassan Reddick and last night during the draft they were comparing him to Von Miller and now Nolan Smith will join the Eagles already stacked pass rush which they just had added Jalen Carter earlier in the draft to and he can learn from guys like Brandon Graham Fletcher Cox and obviously Hassan Reddick who like I said he's drawn a lot of comparisons to he also is a guy that's a very high character guy from what I've heard and he 
now adds to the Eagles' Bulldog-themed defense in which they have Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, Jordan Davis, and N'Kobe Dean. And, you know, a lot of people were calling that defense when they were all together at Georgia one of the better college defenses in history. And now you got four of those key guys assembled on the Eagles' defense, and they can all be building blocks of the future on the defensive side of the ball for the Eagles. And I just cannot wait to see how these guys are going to play next season and moving into the future. And the crazy thing is, I don't even know how much they're going to ask Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith to contribute right away because obviously they have so much depth on their defensive line with their pass rush but I definitely think they're going to have more of a role than say Jordan Davis or N'Kobe Dean did last season and then obviously as we move farther into the future and some of our veterans start to leave they'll assume those roles and I think start to have a bigger impact but still next season I think they can step in and have an immediate impact in the role that they're given and in my eyes what makes both of these picks so great is the value they got both of these players for. Jalen Carter was a guy who like I said was considered to be probably a top two talent in this draft and they got him at number nine overall and Nolan Smith was considered to be maybe a top 15 talent in this draft and they got him at number 30. So I think when you look back on it the Philadelphia Eagles were able to pull off the biggest heist of the first round of the NFL draft by getting Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith and now all of a sudden the Eagles defense that everyone was saying was going to take a huge step back in 2023 is looking scary and the rest of the NFC and the NFC East better watch out. But that's pretty much all I got for this video guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. How much do you like the Jalen Carter and the Nolan Smith picks? I'd love to hear it. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe for more videos just like this covering the Philadelphia Eagles and drop a like on this video again if you did enjoy. And if you want to watch another Eagles video, you can go watch this one right here. Now with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one guys. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.